Welcome to Elagan Whiteboard Friday, where we look at complex legal and compliance issues in a simple to do way. This series is brought to you by Elagan, your partner and provider of end to end business services. Hello and welcome to Elagan Whiteboard Friday, where we look at uh, various tax and compliance related issues in a user friendly fashion. Uh, continuing on our uh, earlier series of uh, going uh, public or listing on your SME exchange, today we will look at in detail as to if you are trying to list your stocks uh, for a small and medium enterprise at a platform called NSEMS, that is a SME exchange platform provided by National Stock Exchange of India. So let's look at what all it takes to go and list at NSEMS. So, some of the eligibility criteria, so the company should have a track record of uh, three years, so it should be at least in business for three plus years. And when we say three years, it could also be like three full years, it's not like two and a half or two years, some extra months, uh, this thing. So, three years track record is mandatory, out of which uh, two years has to be profit, it could be any two years, and not be the last two years. So. When we say profit, it should have a, a good uh, net asset value, that means uh, net, net worth, that is the net asset should be uh, higher than your net liabilities. You should have a history of uh, distributing the profits among your existing shareholders, so that's how we look at our, our two years profit history. The company should not have been referred to uh, a board called BIFR, that is Board of Industrial and Financial Reconstruction. So this is a, a board where a lot of sick companies are referred to see if they can be turned around or if they can be run uh, with some mentoring and uh, some other restructuring exercise. So the company should not have been referred to BIFR at any point of time. Um, there should not be any pending winding up petition for the company in any of the courts of India. So you should not have applied for winding up of the company earlier. Very important, uh, no material regulatory or disciplinary breach. So if you have done any uh, very important or material uh, regulatory breach or any disciplinary breach, then it is very challenging to uh, district NSA much. So you should not have done that. Uh, how this is covered generally like uh, through a set of disclosures so, and uh, disclosures are given not just for the company that you are trying to list, it's given uh, related to the promoters and all other group companies which the current set of promoters are running. So suppose if you are a promoter uh, into multiple companies, then we will have to give disclosures related to all those companies. and. Uh, these disclosures will again uh, relate to things like uh, you should not have any, uh, these are like more towards regulatory and disciplinary breach. So some example is if your company have uh, issued, uh, for example, fixed deposit, bonds, debentures and all, so you should not have defaulted in interest or any principal payments of that. You should not have done any uh, compliance breach, so all your returns, compliances, taxes has to be filed. So those are things, and even uh, any criminal case which is uh, going against the promoters uh, you know, with regard to any other company, so those are some of the disclosures that you have to look at. So this is a very important point, please note that if you have promoters in multiple companies, then details about all these companies has to be given before you can actually list at NSCMR. So if there has been any <coughs> regulatory or disciplinary breach or any uh, important criminal uh, or any other kind of uh, important case that is against promoters or any of these group companies, then it would not be possible. Uh, listing process, uh, so you have to fill up a form, it's very very easy at Tennessee, like it's not very challenging as compared to BSE and all. And we'll look at BSC process in detail. So you have to typically fill up a application form. You have to prepare something called draft red herring prospectus, that is DRHP. You have to give all your uh, memorandum articles, financials of this company, and all the disclosures as we discussed. So not just to the company which you are trying to list, but all for the promoters and also for the other group companies. So with all this you submit the application to NSC Emerge Committee and there is a selection committee which goes through the process in detail 
and give their observation and if they are satisfied with all the criteria then um, then they would allow you to go ahead and nest and there are certain fees which are again less as compared to uh, uh, and it has been designed to keep SME uh, sector in mind. So those fees has to be paid and then you can start um, start the process of nesting. So that's it, a few important things that you should be aware of like uh, your overall size of the equity base should not be more than 25 crore to nest on any of the SME exchange. And uh, this is not open to retail investors, so the minimum tradable lot has to be 1 lakh and above. And uh, the, the, the stocks has to be completely underwritten and uh, market making is needed. So these are some of the concepts that you should be looking at. So to know what are the other steps uh, or how you can go ahead and invest on an SME exchange, uh, please refer to our other video on SME exchange and that would help you understand the process. That's it on this. Uh, thanks for attending eLagan Whiteboard Friday. Uh, feel free to drop us an email at support at eLagan.com or you can check our knowledge base at eLagan.com on the KB. Thank you.